Welcome to St. Anne's Episcopal Church in Trexler Town, Pennsylvania, and Happy Easter. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, Anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Today's psalm is Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2 and 14 through 24. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his mercy endures forever. Let Israel pro now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from Colossians, chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. If you have been raised with Christ... Seek the things that are above, where Christ is, 
seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> On the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down in and saw the wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting there where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned to him and said in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that she had seen, excuse me, and she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. As we have been invited this Lent and throughout our journey of discipleship to come and see, we have accompanied Jesus on his journey and his ministry and listened and have heard and we have seen and heard many things particularly as we have engaged in this time of Lent and like the disciples there's many things that make us feel very good and very happy and some things that we just don't understand and maybe some things that we just set aside and we really don't think about sort of like the predictions that Jesus made about his death and resurrection. Because certainly, after Good Friday, and after Jesus is dead and he is in the tomb, the disciples despair. They, they don't know. They don't understand, and they're afraid. And it's understandably so. It's so much to understand. But it's not till this Easter morning that we hear with Mary and the two disciples, at least one at first, between Peter and this other disciple. He sees and he believes. I'm sure he didn't understand, because then he and Peter went home. But Mary, Mary stays there. Mary's dedication in her heart and her soul are connected to this loss that she's felt. And so when she does see Jesus, it's a lot for her to comprehend. 
that would be too much, that Jesus would have risen, that Jesus would be there. So at first she doesn't know who he is and she doesn't recognize him and think him, that she thinks that he is the gardener. But then he calls her by name, just as God calls us all by name. Each of us individually to have a very wonderful and an incredible relationship with him that really is beyond understanding. But just like that disciple, we must first see and believe. And Mary, Mary, she becomes the first evangelist. She goes out and she shares with the disciples what Jesus has shared with her, that he's risen and that he's going to ascend to the Father. And understand that at this day, on this time, at the resurrection, that which was broken way back, as we hear in Genesis, that relationship between God and ourselves and between each other, that fracture is healed. And as much as we still have problems and difficulties in our faithfulness to God and our love and devotion to each other, it is healed through the mercy, through the love and the sacrifice of God. So that is why at the very end of the gospel, he goes, not that I'm going to see my God and my Father, my God and your God. He goes and he has healed that breach. And that relationship is restored. And that was what was once too much to hope for, as Mary was at the tomb, or too wonderful to be believed, is there and is present and is open to all of us. So this is a great invitation for all of us to come home. So as you see this video and you reflect on the, the reality of the situation we find ourselves in, it's a great time for us to rededicate ourselves to our relationship with God and with each other. Because God invites us not to be judged, but to be welcomed home. To not look at the relationship which may have been fractured or may have been neglected or may have been difficult in the past, but to know that that has been healed through the blood of Christ. And to know nothing other than the love, the mercy, and the compassion of God shown to us today on this Easter day, and in such a way that Jesus, after having died on the cross, rises from the dead. Nothing is too wonderful, and nothing is too great. And all of us, called by name, are to be a part of that, and to be made whole. May God be blessed. Traditionally on Easter, we remember and rededicate ourselves to our baptismal promises, we remind ourselves of that relationship, that part that we are of the family of God. And in a subsequent video later this morning, we will have a baptism, which we will do in honoring all of the requirements that we need to do for safety, and of course, for honoring the traditions and the ways of the church. I invite you to see that video also, but at this time, I invite you to renew your baptismal vows and join with me in prayer. Dear people of God, through our baptism into the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have been reborn into new life in him. I call upon you, therefore, as we celebrate uh, Jesus's, as we celebrate baptism, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask, do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water of the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
by him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. <clears throat> and now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. And again, as we continue our separation, I offer this opportunity for you to make a spiritual communion, recognizing that in the body and blood of Christ, we are also the body of Christ, having shared that that sacrament with each other, we now are invited in its absence to be that body of Christ to our sisters and brothers. So the one day when we come again and we will be united again in church and in places of worship and celebrate this sacrament in a physical sense. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.